So now that we've been really technical here with Photoshop, now it is time to have a little more fun and play around with filters. Okay, there are about 99 filters in Photoshop that can add special effects to your photos. Most of the time, you're not going to use 90% of those, but in case you ever need them in the future, it's nice to know at least what some of the possibilities are. There are some filters in there. I know what they do, but I've never, ever had a use for them. But I never know if a client is going to want me to use them. So at least I know what they do. And that's the whole point. You're not wasting time testing them out. You kind of know what they do by practicing with them here in Photoshop. So I have a file prepared for that. I'm going to go to File and Open in Chapter 7, Folder 3. I have two photos. One is of this doll, or you can pick this one of this stained glass window. I would typically pick number two because there's a lot more detail to really help you to see filters. But either pick one or two. Doesn't matter to me. Okay, I'm going to open this photo. And right off the bat, you can see I've already added a series of guides to divide this into 20 sections or 20 squares. Okay, all I'm asking you to do is try out 20 filters. You have about 99. So I'm not asking much, okay, don't complain. Um, what I wanna do though, is make sure that my guides really stand out. Cause there's a lot of red in this image to begin with. So to prepare for using filters, I'm gonna go to Photoshop menu, preferences, guides, grid, and slices. And instead of my guides being red, I'm going to make them green. They're a lot brighter. They easily stand out. Also, to ensure that I am taking advantage of all my filters, I'm going to go to plugins right here. See if that'll start. Hopefully that won't freeze on me. There we go. And you want to make sure all three check marks are turned on, especially this top one, show all filter gallery groups. You got to have that turned on. And I'll click OK. Now, the next problem you're going to have is if I zoom in here on this first square, when I take my rectangle marquee and I click and drag, it's going to go right past the guides. You can see it in that corner right there. Okay, I dragged right past the corner. So I want a way to guarantee, Command D, that when I click and drag, it's going to stop on the guides. And there's a feature for that built into Photoshop. So it's right here. View. And let's see, snap to, snap to my guides. That's it, turn it on. So now when I click and drag, the guides will act like little magnets. So as I get close to that corner, it will snap to the corner, making a perfect rectangular or square selection. Okay, that's perfect. Now I want to experiment with a filter for that section right there. So I'm just gonna stay on my rectangle for now. Accidentally deselected that, there we go. On my bottom layer, my background layer, I can go to filter and you're gonna start down here, okay? You have multiple choices in each one of these categories. I would try one from artistic and then one from blur. You can skip blur gallery. That's a totally different set of blur filters. Um, one from brush strokes, one from distort. And then once you tried a couple of these, then go back and say, okay, I tried one. What does this one do? Okay, so I'm going to go to artistic and let's try, uh, let's try plastic wrap. Okay, that's going to bring me into the filter gallery, this little window, this control window. So it shows me what my filter is gonna look like, but I have settings over on the right. So I can set the highlight strength to be more, set the detail amount to be more, 
set the smoothness to be really tight or smooth, like freeze drying it in a freezer. Plastic wrap. So I'll click OK, Command D, and then as a reminder to yourself what filter you use, I want you to type in the name of the filter. Okay, so it's Command D, D select. D for default colors, and you click once on your type tool. All you're going to do is set your font to be centered, set the name of the font to Arial, and set the style of the font to bold. I'm going to set the size right here to about 24. Okay, all I have to do is click and I'm going to hold down my caps lock key there and just type in plastic, hit return, wrap. Okay, if those two words are too far apart, I can highlight the word wrap, come right up here to my text or character panel. If my type is 24, my letting should be close to that, so I'll set it to 30. There we go. Now my type comes together a little closer like that. If those words are a little too big, so they look like they might be, double click. I'm going to set this to, let's say, 20 point. There we go. Click on my text and we'll set the letting also to 20 point. There we go. And Arial Bold should be fine for what we're doing. There we go. All right, put it in the center. Okay, here's the next thing you're going to have to pay attention to. You cannot apply Photoshop filters to type. If you stay on your type layer and you go to your rectangle and drag over the next square, filter, blur, let's say radial blur, you will get an error message. This is basically asking you, convert your type into a photo. Well, I don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to cancel. Just remember, if you are going to use a filter, you have to come back down to your background layer. That's the photo. You have to apply filters to your photo. Your photo is always going to be your bottom layer. Now let's try filter, blur, and radial blur. I'll set this to zoom at 100% like I've shown you before. There we go. There's a radial blur. Command D. And if it helps, you can zoom in a little bit. Kind of see the effect more clearly. But let's say you are working and you got a phone call. You ran outside. You take your phone call. Now you come back and you forgot what filter that was. Okay. If that is the last thing you did, your filter menu will remember and tell you this is the last filter you just used. So that's a nice feature. Okay, it's just a reminder. This is what I did. So like, cool. I'll click and type radial, hit return, blur. I can move that into place wherever I want it to be. That's fine. Come back down to the bottom layer, go to the rectangle, and I'll select the third square. You got to be on the bottom layer in order to use your filters. Now I go to filter. I've tried one from artistic. I tried one from blur. Let's go down to brush strokes and I'm going to type in angled strokes. I don't even know what that does. Okay. If I drag this over, it looks okay, but it looks like it's kind of smearing it. I don't like that that much. Let's try sprayed strokes. There we go. They get much more of a pronounced effect. Okay, so that's sprayed strokes. I click OK, Command D, take my type tool and click, sprayed, hit return, strokes. Take my move tool and move it into position. Always go down to your bottom layer again. I'm just going to do the top row. I'm not going to do all 20 of these in a demo. Just show you what you're going to be doing here. So the next square, 
I'm on the bottom layer. Filter, distort, and let's try twirl. As I click and drag this, I'm going to twirl the image around. Click OK. Like, I've never, ever had a use for that filter. It just destroys your photos, but it's nice to know what it does. Command D to deselect. Take my type tool and click. And that is the twirl. Take my move tool and move it into place. Always come back to your bottom layer. And we'll do one last square right here. You got to be on the bottom layer in order to use filters because filters are applied to your photo. Your bottom layer is your photo. Filter, noise, and let's try add noise. Whoa, that's a lot. Okay, let's drag this back a little bit. Okay, so it just gives it kind of a grainier look. Here's monochromatic. If I turn that off, I get all the rainbow of colors. If I turn that on, greens, purples, reds. So there's my noise filter. Command D, go to my type tool, click, and I'll type in noise. Okay, so you're going to go through this process. And again, what I would do is save your progress. Every time you finish a square and label it, save your progress. Finish another square, type in the name of the filter, save. Finish another square, type in the name of the filter, save. Constantly be saving. You don't want to get down here to the 18th and then Photoshop crashes on you. Okay, constantly be saving your progress. Okay, what you're going to do is eventually do a filter on every one of these squares. What I would not do is do not do the 3D because that's going to bring you into the 3D workspace and you're going to get stuck. So no 3D filters. No video filters. This is not a video file. Okay. No 3D and no video. Okay. Use it from this point down. Artistic through texture. Don't do these. Those are totally different from artistic down through texture. Okay. Once you have tried a different filter on every one of these squares, you're going to type in the names of all of those filters. So let me show you what your file is going to look like. Okay, I'm just going to copy my type here. I'll hit Command J to duplicate all that type. And you're going to have the next row labeled. You're going to have the next row also labeled, obviously with different filter names. I'm just doing this so you can see. By the time you get near the end, you're going to have type all over your file every one of these squares labeled with the different filter that you used. That's going to result in a lot of type layers. You can see as I scroll up and down, we got a lot of type. Some of this type is hard to read. Okay, so what you're going to do is once you've applied all your filters and you labeled all your type, you click on the top type layer, scroll down and shift click the bottom type layer, not the photo. All your type layers are selected. Click and then shift click. Then you go to the pop-up menu on the layers panel and you merge those type layers into one. Right there. So all your type will be on that top layer. Okay, type's still hard to read. So you go to the right side of that layer and you double click. I'm going to click on the word stroke. My type is already black, so I don't want a black stroke. So I click on that and I make it white. Right here is the thickness of that stroke. I'm just going to drag it down so it's a little easier to read right there. And now I click OK. Instantly labeling all the filters that I use, making it legible. And that's what you're going to do for me. I just want you to know what some of these filters do. Experiment. See what they do. See which ones work. See which ones you look at and go, wow, I would never use that again. Get to know your filters because I'm not coming back to them. So this is the one and only time we're going to really look at them. In the future, filters are up to you.
It's based on your personal preference, but get to know them with this exercise and I'll see what you come up with.